shout out to Gemma Pugh who's listening from Shropshire. This is Mead and Cheese returning after what four weeks? Something like that. I don't think anyone noticed. I think everyone noticed. I certainly world. noticed. I will say, I missed my Mead and Cheese, <laughs> and, and I'm pleased that it's back. Yeah, well, Tom Gibbs did um, stop it for a while, didn't he? He shut the he shut the show down. I shut the show down. Yeah, he, he had he had um, some. He sent us a cease and desist. I did. Did I? We'll be all over throughout <laughs> Christmas. We've been fighting Tom Gibbs. Um, our lawyers and his lawyers have been battling out. But we come to a negotiation that Tom Gibbs will come on the show, and he will be returning on the show a yep. lot. This is nice. our legal legally bound agreement. Apparently. Tom uh, Gibbs is now <laughs> head of Mead and Cheese. <laughs> head of Mead and Cheese. Fantastic. So I've set myself a fun challenge for the new year. What's that? Oh, yeah. So my band are going to attempt to create an entire album in Spanish. Yeah. Good None of us speak album. Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to go for an entire album. None of you know Spanish. I, get the, I guess the, uh, the Duolingo is going to be hit up on a mad basis then get that Spanish hours in other yeah. language learning platforms are available of course but get the Spanish learnt up and or, or you're just going to go completely blind just like writing in Spanish yet not knowing anything I mean that could be funnier <laughs> oh wait <laughs> we, we have a guest at we the have door. a guest he's, we'll, he's trying we, to get in will you go let the guest in shall we, shall we let him wait for a bit <laughs> he looks sad go let him in <laughs> you know what we will be back after Blue World by Mac Miller with our guest. Wow. Anything can happen at any time we ever. Need, we need you to stay on so you can... You know, the only bit cheese. of Spanish that I know is La Caruenta, por favor, which is, can I have the bill, please? And I think I also mix up with a bit of Italian by accident, so it's not actually Spanish. I it's mean... La, it's the, it's the actual thing, it's La Cuenta, por favor. That's it, La yeah. Cuenta. But I, I call it... for that too many times wherever you go, just so mm. you know. You, do, you show off for Spanish, you're like, have, you like, you know, say, what was it? La, 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 la cuenta, por favor. La cuenta, por favor. Yeah. I don't, I don't think Can I have the bill, please? You shouldn't ask that every week. That'll be the last song on the album. Yeah, but you forget, guys. I've got parents that are, like, massive alcoholics. So of course, they could say, can I have the bill, please? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, so, fantastic. yeah. Fantastic. Drama. We're, we're all doing... <laughs> <laughs> don't mean to dump. No. <laughs> we're all doing... Dry, dry, Dry January. Aren't I'm we? not. No, I'm not either. I was about to say, when did I agree to this? I think the rule f- with Dry January is that you can't drink except when meat and cheese is on. Yeah, I exactly. Think that's a rule that you just made up. <laughs> but, um, but I think it it's is. a pretty good rule, especially for people who are, do it, are doing Dry January and finding it a bit hard. If you yes, yeah, so exactly. and I can tell by Corey. Bless it's him. the thirteenth. <laughs> Look at him. He's, I, you could just see it in his little eyes the minute you know the mead was on place on the table. He was like. Please, there is sir. no me. We're doing Dobby January. wants me. I went 36 hours without <laughs> sleep. Dobby's a free elf. You went 36 That'll hours without sleep. sleep. That is Isn't a Isn't that like run. when you start going delusional and stuff? Everything sounded like a demon was talking to me. Corey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can I am now concerned for your mental health, my friend. <laughs> no, I'm fine Thank now. I've slept. <laughs> <Pessies, Dan>. Um <laughs> In that case. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it wasn't good. I'd be there, and Liz would be talking to me. I'd be like, "Liz, you sound like a demon. This isn't good." <laughs> Listen, Corey. The more you talk, the more I get concerned. It's <laughs> it's not okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was, that was really a bit. <laughs> that's rather good, though. <laughs> that, oh. that was pretty good, to be fair. Yeah. So, um, I got I some voice actors <laughs> in the room, but <laughs> so I set everyone a little challenge before we came on this Ooh. show. Spicy. I didn't get um, the challenge. You did. You did. There was a magic <laughs> mead which uh, I told everyone about, which was from Nottingham, I think. And that I bought. Mead. Yeah. Yeah. They do it. They it, was, it was at the Christmas market. There was like a load they of it in York as well. Fun fact: the mead. Why could we hear ourselves just then? Oh, are you playing it back? <laughs> <laughs> so, <what> I, <laughs> <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, listeners, if you'd like to hear the same 15 seconds on repeat, yeah. then we've got you back here. Yeah, if you, if you miss, it's on our catch-up channel, it's on the same channel. <laughs> so, yeah, I, w- <laughs> I went... Me and cheese plus one. <laughs> <laughs> I, w- I went to the Christmas market in Nottingham. Re- I really do recommend it if anybody goes. I've been to many a Christmas market, and they, I have to say they're the best. Um, and also, it's free entry because you know I'm not paying a tenner Manchester or London. Well, thank you, you have very to much. Pay ten pounds to, go yeah, into to the get Manchester into Christmas and also market. and also uh, London Scum. as well. 
Well, so you haven't even bought anything. So you're just going in. You're not yeah. even having to buy anything. You're just yeah. ten pounds like right, that's it. And then you've got to pay for all the rides and all the food. That's not included in the ticket. That's yeah. that's crazy. That's nuts. And everything's yeah. well expensive when you go in there as well. Yeah. Like only, yeah. a fucking Yorkshire sorry. A Yorkshire pudding costs like a million pounds just oh, for have, you still, tried, have you yeah, tried the Yorkshire nice. pudding wraps? Yeah, they're, they're nice. They're so good. As I love that it speaks to my soul. We oh. could get some Yorkshire puddings on this show. I feel that like Yorkshire be. pudding wraps. Yes. Yeah. Tom, can you Yorkshire, Yorkshire, Yorkshire pudding, pudding from now on. Yes, Yorkshire. DJ Yorkshire pudding. <laughs> yeah, that's your new name. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Brilliant. Anyway, back Speaking to the mead. Pudding. Wait, back to the mead store. I haven't Sorry. finished with the anecdote with the mead store. Anyway, I was talking to um, one of the guy that was selling it, and bear in mind the actual maker wasn't there. She'd gone to the toilet, as the guy politely told me. Um, one or two. I don't know. He didn't specify. Three. <laughs> anyway, apparently it was a woman that had been making these throughout lockdown and they've been matured for over four years. Mm-hmm. So this mead has not been opened or sold up until the Nottingham Christmas market. It's very good. It is good. So what what are people's thoughts then? Like, It's got a slight spice to it and I like it. It has. Okay. It's got that little bit, a little aftertaste on the tongue. I think it's quite it's strong, good. you know. It's, like, it's quite a strong one. Uh, where would you... All rate this on our mead scales. I wouldn't rate it as high as Nidhogger. No. Careful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you see, my, my mead category or my mead catalogue, as it will, is not very big at the moment. I've not. This is the first type of mead. Well, I've that's had why this. you're on this show, Tom. There we go. <laughs> this, that, that, this one that we're discussing is the first one that I've had that's been made north of Exeter. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the second ever mead. And I, I mean, to be fair, nice. Nottingham's not really that north, really. So, like, <laughs> technically, mm. it's in the south. But it's the Midlands. Is this not- yeah, it's Midlands. Nottingham in the south, that doesn't sit right with me. It's yeah, right I feel like a bunch of people from Nottingham might get quite upset if you're saying that. Well, yeah, to be fair, I'm from Wales. We, we're just middle of everything, so. I think all of Wales is more similar to the north of England than the south. Yeah. We also got, you well, know, so everywhere, including like Cardiff. We got and messed and around by Thatcher yeah, too, so. <laughs> <laughs> Can't, uh, you know, can relate. But I'd say that's guy. I'd put that up there with because I say this because the only other mead I've ever had is is Lime Bay, um, mm. which I imagine is quite an esteemed mead amongst the two of you, mead and cheese. I would hope so at least. Yeah, Lime Bay was my, uh, still kind of is my favourite mead brand. Mm. I think they just do it right. I think they deliver. It, you know, you can get it in Leicester and a few places. Um, yeah. This Sweet. is this, this is nice, nice though. I like the bottle mm. design, like Magic Mead. Um, they had like they had like a looks, whole. It looks retro as well. Yeah, yeah, it looks like something out of a something like a king. They had a banner. Make. They had a, like a full banner made that was stitched. It was yeah. very. It felt very medieval on the contrast to the German market. Which, by the way, why do we have German markets? Why don't we have like a medieval market instead? Because I feel like that would make more sense instead of having a German market. Because mm. there's more German people around than there are medieval people. That's fair. What are you on about? <laughs> You'd have to be doing quite well as a medieval folks, wouldn't you? Spectrum. No, 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 it's the spectrum on full show. Is that word of the day today? Yeah. There's not that many medieval people around. <laughs> Are there any around? That's a real question. Your mum. Oh. Hey. Oh. Meat and cheese truly is back now, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. But you can get. The, they've got a website, so you can go on their website and actually order their mead online. It smells there. like feet. It's magicmead.co.uk. It, it, to be fair, it could be the cup because I did get them from Amazon for Tom. Could be the cup. Could be the cup. Because bear in mind, it's not real horn. It's made out of plastic that looks like horn. Speaking of horn, <laughs> I oh. have brought with us some games for us to play. Oh, a pub Ooh, quiz. We have a pub Even though quiz. we're not in a pub. <laughs> I mean... It yeah, effectively is for the next yeah. hour. And we also have impossible decisions. Oh. And later on, I think we're going to play a new game that we've never done on the show before called Exciting. Pitch Strike. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> And we'll get you to pitch something to us, and when we shout pitch strike, we get to uh, invade, <laughs> some might say, that pitch. Uh, <laughs> we distract. You're a fool. We distract. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what? Not invade. Know. We cannot say the word invade. It is owned and copyrighted. 
Is it actually under copyright now? <laughs> no, it's not, but I'm going to say it because this is easier to... Our legal team have, have, have recommended that. Yeah, our legal fine. team, me. We <laughs> interfere it. with the pitch. Inter- pitch interference, is it? <laughs> that, I love that. Pitch interference. <laughs> pitch, pitch, pitch interference. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good interference no <laughs> right These sound like fun games though, and especially i'm looking forward to pitch In- interference pitch interference <laughs> <laughs> it looks sounds exciting looking okay forward. we can't say the other word we cannot say <laughs> the other word which one should we do first impossible decisions or the pub quiz impossible oh i, I think, think impossible decisions yeah. Yeah. We, we, we're clearly not very good at making decisions i reckon so and i need something to distract yeah, me be. from my coursework because i'm just <laughs> no you need to do your coursework i'm doing it when did you win tonight, tonight. oh no what time uh midnight and it is currently 21 minutes past seven yeah, it's fine I got, I, 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 i've only got 500 words I, to write well. oh that's fine <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's i told fine. you not maybe 700 <laughs> i did 5,000 in two days see that's not Easy. bad that is not bad <laughs> okay Easy. here's a question then Easy. would you rather lose all of your money or all the pictures you've ever taken all the pictures i've ever taken all my money i'd you go see. with all the money yeah. I've, I tr- I've never had a lot of money to be fair same <laughs> so it kind of doesn't make I'm a on difference like, what <laughs> minus five pounds I could lose that yeah. losing that because if you yeah, <laughs> that's a good point if you're in debt if you're in like your overdraft for example does it include student uh, the bank account overdraft can do I lose that lose I didn't gain it back <laughs> yeah do you lose your so if, 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 if does it reset to zero that'd be great <laughs> that'd be quite nice actually so if you're a student you've got like, like 300 quid overdrawn for instance <laughs> and then you lose that overdrawn 300 would you lose <laughs> right. your numbers I'm not your numbers <laughs> <laughs> or does it mean you just end up in more debt probably that's yeah. true possibly yeah. keep the pictures so long as you make money so long as yeah. that overdraw that overdrawn status if that's what's removed and you're set back to zero again I'd probably say the money but I don't put too much value in pictures, really. You know, well, I'm not much of a sentimental man. Well. Yeah, you've got paintings. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I think you so there is one pictures. medieval man left. <laughs> you've got to keep your pictures. They're your memories. Like, money yeah. is nothing. You can regain money. Money is like, people put too much value on money. That's a massive U-turn from what you just said, Tom. <laughs> Same. You just don't have full U with that. <laughs> yeah, money's valueless, ladies and gents. Yeah, it is pretty valuable. <laughs> Influence and is, is important. This is an interesting question. I don't think it's a very difficult one, though. Would you rather live 100 years in the past or 100 years in the future? Future. Future. Definitely yeah. future. No one lived through World War One. That sounded awful. I don't really yeah, want to be, be hate-crimed because yeah. I'm a woman. <laughs> Unless you could drop me off after 1980. <laughs> I want to be able to vote. <laughs> I'd be quieter, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I think it would be quite cool living in a post-apocalyptic wasteland, you know? Yeah, same. <laughs> but we all speak in Chinese. I mean, you get like, <laughs> past, don't No, we're really. speaking American with Donald Trump is still in charge. Or Bet. Korean, whichever comes first. Yeah. yeah. Although... Yeah. If you went 100 years in the past, you could then take credit for every creative thing that's ever come out. Yeah, but that is what? effort, that time. No way. You could write all the Beatles songs yourself. So but isn't that, isn't that a plot of a film? Yeah, it is. That yesterday. Is. Yesterday, yeah. and it's really bad. I did not I didn't mind it. it. I thought it was alright. It's not my thing. Mm. You could go release a film called Avengers. <laughs> <laughs> Marvel like, yeah, was yeah, already a thing, me. though, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, Marvel was already a thing by 18-something. Uh, uh, I eighteen. F- I yeah, th- <laughs> I thought the original plot of yesterday when I read like the description was beetles didn't ex- exist, like the actual <laughs> animal beetles. <laughs> <laughs> like you wake up and beetles just don't exist anymore. I don't think anyone would notice. To be fair, <laughs> I think the ecosystem would, after a couple of weeks, sort yeah, of have effect. But you know, immediately, I don't I think, think people would notice. The only people true. who would notice are like beetle scientists. Yeah. <laughs> All Wait, day. Our entire life. You mean zoologists? No, I was writing my dissertation on the dung beetle. <laughs> there was 50 words away, and I was going to study him one last time just to get the word count up, and it's gone. That could be interesting if all the Beatles were disappeared, but no, future. <laughs> That's a good back to the What would happen if Beatles didn't exist? The Beatles or Beatles or both? We'll go both. Both, both Beatles. I think the Rolling Stones would be a lot more popular. <laughs> This is true. <laughs> I think about it, the Beatles and Rolling Stones could go hand in hand when you look at things like the Dung Beetle. I know it's not Rolling <laughs> Stones, but, you know. What would happen if the Stones didn't all. exist? If what stones, are you talking about? It'd just be rock what if rocks didn't <laughs> exist? The no. rock and roll. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, hey. Music takes a lot of its influence just from Stones, doesn't it? <laughs> Stoner. And bugs yeah. are What? Tom's <laughs> 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 like five conversations behind. <laughs> Music takes a lot of his influence from stones. Stones. Here's yeah. an interesting I'm glad you said that. 
I was falling down with that voice. I never well. heard a song. <laughs> I'm restless. I'm restless. Yeah. I'm going to write a song about yeah, the boulder. The rock would be a bit stuffed, wouldn't he? Who's that? The rock. Exactly. Oh, the rock. That, that would have been better if you just yeah. said the boulder. <laughs> <laughs> the boulder. What are you talking about? The boulder. <laughs> Doing the Boulder Johnson. <laughs> exactly. It's the Boulder Shoulders, son. Uh, <laughs> right, would you rather <laughs> be able to breathe underwater or walk through fire? Breathe underwater. Seems more... Yeah, like, breathe yeah. underwater. Way uh, better. Seems more This useful. is a list of very possible questions. Seems yeah. more useful, but walking through fire is also very cool. Yeah, but when are you ever going to be in a cool. fire? It's cool. Apart from doing... bonfire night, And maybe. also, you would be the best firefighter ever, because fire wouldn't hurt you. Was yeah, but that's yeah. massively altruistic, and I just want to pretend I'm Jesus and walk on water. Yeah. <laughs> well, they'd be breathing underwater, so you'd walk on it for about <laughs> half a second. But <laughs> yeah, but saying I'd that... Figure out, well, I'd, figure out a very con- <laughs> I'd figure out a very convoluted you'd be plan. Yeah. Yeah. That, if you could breathe underwater, you'd be the best lifeguard ever. You would. Yeah, you and bear in mind, more people die from drowning than they do from fires. So. Is that... Can someone pull that fact up? Because I'm not sure I how legitimate it, that is. Well, no, because people can drown in paddling, paddling pools and stuff. And I then, once knew sorry. someone who had four llamas who all drowned in a pool. <coughs> in a puddle, sorry. Wait, did the owner of the llamas <laughs> drown or did the llamas drown? The lam- four llamas drowned in a puddle, yeah. Hmm. Well, they, they were just like, right, okay, on three, we just dip our... They've dip got our such long necks. Ca- yeah, exactly. Like, I don't know what just... happened. I think they got KO'd by something. A puddle. In a puddle. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, they got KO'd into a puddle and then they died in the puddle. Uh, which is, you know, pretty funny. It's got to be, got to be breathing underwater. Actually, that's not my story. I'd, I'd I can't take credit for that. Probably go with that. Yeah. 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 It feels like if you could, because you know, people talk about like the ice, like the, the water level rising as well, or anything. But just that a lot of the world is water. You've got so much access to everything, like deep sea stuff as well, like mm. coral reef. You could go underneath and look at the coral reef for yourself, and you take pictures or anything like that. You could find out if Atlantis was real or not. Exactly. I do think that and goes to the Titanic before it disappears. No. Cool as well, though. It, it, <laughs> I like we did that. <laughs> <laughs> and here's the thing: just because you can breathe underwater doesn't mean you're safe. Like if you go in the ocean, a shark could still get you. Ah, uh-uh. thing is though, right? Sharks only come up to you if you're bleeding, because then they smell like the hormones or the a certain Blood. heat texture. Yeah, basically, that's yeah. how they come and get you. You're more likely to probably get eaten by a a whale accidentally because they're so big and they can't this really see orcas are pretty nasty things aren't yeah. they they are very nasty Jellyfish. clever though clever very clever yeah, don't, don't yeah but what I'm saying is you're not safe <laughs> oh do you know do, do you know right orcas each pod speaks a different language so if, if you were to take an orca from a pod from I don't know um, outside of South America and then you took it to one upwards like in Florida they wouldn't be able to communicate with each other I might be over over overthinking the question but like, I found the fact, by the way. Can just you breathe in salt <laughs> water? I would assume it. W- yeah, when it says any breathe water. In water. I imagine yeah. it would. It's not like the bath. It might just mean fresh you know. water, though. Because no, fresh, water would, be, well, like, fresh water would be a game changer for me. Like you just go go up the river, just swim in. Just He'd be canal boy. <laughs> it's bad enough. Like, exactly, You're just a canal, canal boy. boy. I'm going to ask my own <laughs> question then. Would you rather only be able to breathe in salt water or only in fresh water? I think salt is so. way more salt, interesting. Yeah. Salt, if you're at the beach, you don't no have to worry f- about No offence to the canals or the rivers of many a country, but I'd rather be swimming in the this, ocean. This, it's like, I don't want to be sleeping. I don't want to be like swimming around in some bog, you know? No, canals yeah, around here just have loads of dirt in them. That's not dirt in those canals. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's dead bodies. Okay, so, Boop. It's yeah. your mum. <laughs> anyway, oh, yeah. um, according to uh, jury facts... <laughs> mm. It's basically the first thing that comes up, basically. Um, injury facts. Injury facts, yeah. And not injury facts. <laughs> I can't read. <laughs> <laughs> um, 3,800 uh, civilian deaths are caused by fires each year, according to a study done in 2021. And then, <laughs> wow, that's a big number. 32,000 annual drowning deaths happen worldwide. That's a hell of a big difference. Wait, so what? No, you three f- million? Right, yeah, 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 yeah. Three million? Is that th- what? 30... How much? Look at that. Look at It's on the... It's there in black and white. Oh, it's 320,000. And suddenly, 000. Aquaman no longer seems as useless. <laughs> yeah, if Aquaman... Like, if you just breathe underwater, you're just your own... Yeah, Aquaman, but Aquaman sucks. Like, can that I... Film does suck. Real? That, that film does suck. That would be amazing. Yeah. Having the power to talk to fish would also be pretty cool. Yeah. Although I don't imagine they'd have a lot to say. No. They'd be like, just be What's breathing going on underwater, though. <laughs> you'd be a stranger in their world because you wouldn't be able to talk fish. Oh, my God. Breathe. No, if you found... Oh yeah, I found this video out recently, but they uh, scientists have found out that sea urchins, right, they hold secret parties. 
This is an actual thing. They make their own, like, attire, because they have to uh, come in, like, a specific attire, a.k.a. hats. So they make their own hats, and then they dance around in, like, a pattern. And they've scientists have realised that it wow. mimics dancing. So they come in, they're wearing these little, like, skeletal shrimp hats, and they're all dancing, and it's fascinating. And they actually found out because they sort of crashed the party by accident. Wow. So, Eddie, was it Blue Planet you were watching or Spongebob? <laughs> <laughs> I was watching... Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's an actual uh, fact I have the video on my phone I saved it <laughs> It's really cute Was it on TikTok? It was on TikTok uh, uh, But I did research it myself as fair. well Because I found out what article it was And it was really fascinating There's a whole video on it as well That's fu- That is so, nice. Yeah. Fair play Damn. Little fish have little parties Like actual bikini bottom level like, I don't think okay. I could deal with like getting rejected from a fish party as well as like my actual human parties that yeah, I've been invited true. to. Imagine it's invited bad to enough getting party. rejected from human parties, let alone fish, fish parties. ones. Yeah. You know? <laughs> 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 Sorry, you've got there's a another question on there, on here, but um, fill, I don't the, fill the data. Fill the data. I don't think it's very interesting. To Go be on. So I'll ask an even more interesting version of this question. If you could have any superpower, what would it be? The ability to control time. It beats everything. I'd, um, I'd go with shape-shifting, shape-shifting. personally. Yeah? What would you yeah. shape-shift into? I feel like Anything. only perverts say, mom, say that. You know what I mean? It's <laughs> only the same mean? as being invisible, you know? Well, his what? power is shape-shifting. Yeah, the shape-shifting. Thing. It um, can be, but it's, it's like every hmm. power in one. If I need super strength, I'll transform into a big gorilla. Oh, no, do you no, get no, the no. power so of the person as well? Or do you just get this, like, if I need If I need to be fast, I'll transform into a cheetah. Would, that, would, no. you know would be really funny if you turned into a cheetah and you were as fast as you are now? <laughs> 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 you just running on the spot at about six, seven miles an hour. How <laughs> fast people run, I don't know. And then you just hear him going, I'm about six miles an hour. <laughs> would you just be a really overweight cheetah? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. You shape shift, but you keep the same level of health that you have. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness me. Oh, so, um, any Brilliant. I don't know. I think it's either time or teleportation. Not shape shifting. Instant, instant access to, to to time of any period or anywhere. I think mm, manipulation of time is much better than teleportation. Because there's the classic. I, agree. I yeah. like the idea of flying. I just that's just me. Again, shape shift into a bird. Yeah, but you'll be like. Oof. You get, you get tired. <laughs> of the <laughs> <laughs> I love how you went. Oof. <laughs> Oh, it's an interesting. Can I put an interest, a, a slight spin on that? Because I've been asked this before with superpowers. Would you rather have the, the power to fly, but only a meter off the ground, mm-hmm. or have the power to turn invisible, but only for ten seconds at a time? Invisible was, ten got, seconds. I, I got asked that seconds. one point, and that I thought that was rather interesting. Ten mm. seconds is not a long time. No, it's not a long time. But, it's but it is enough time to run up to someone and give them a wedgie. <laughs> <laughs> you can That's do like true. loads of like weird fun pranks, like. You could prank people, but then you'd be sort then of... Then you hide around the corner, <laughs> wait for your cool-down timer, <laughs> and cool do it again. Down. <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking if you had the power to fly a, but um, off the ground, would you be, like, stuck in traffic? So you'd just be sat there, just be, like, with your arms out like Superman, just, any minute now, this could go green. I would manipulate <laughs> that power so that people treat me like a god. Or would you be in the cycle lane? <laughs> would you just be coming along Superman style, meet her off the ground, you like, oi, no, he, he, get out of way. Like, look at me. He'll be in the pedestrian. He'll be on the pre- he'll be on the path. He'll be on the pedestrian side. Get <laughs> them off the pavement. They have <laughs> struck pedestrian way. <laughs> well, I don't know. It helped you reach up to the high up shelves, though, wouldn't it? What flying a meter off the ground? Yeah, maybe a bit. I don't think so. Any more than that, he'd be like out of reach. <laughs> you know. How big do you think shelves are? Three meters. But well, then again, the Corey's quite short. Library was so yeah. Corey's quite short. <laughs> this is a, this is a you are a small man. Me. You could get a jetpack though, what does a lot better. I don't think you could take a jetpack into Tesco. <laughs> you could just you fly could. around Tesco. Me. <laughs> Supermarket sweep would be really interesting. Wouldn't that it? would be good. No, because then you could take your jetpack with you, and then you do your invisible ability thing, and then but people still be able to see. The wow, jetpack. this jetpack is flying by itself <laughs> for ten seconds. Here's a question: That's incredible. Invisibility. Do the clothes you're wearing go invisible with you? That's a good shout. I mean, it's got to be do you have to you get possess. naked? I like the idea of The Boys. Have you guys seen the TV show The Boys? I haven't. Okay, the first season, they have um, a guy who's invisible and they have to have, he has to wear a specific suit um, to then become in, sort of to help him be invisible. Otherwise, he has to get 
full on naked. Mm. Um, and there's a scene where um, <clears throat> the main character, Huey, has to sort of, I'm going to say lodge something, but I'm not going to describe where. And this specific person that is nude and invisible, they're trying to find where this person is, and he manages to get it. <laughs> but it's, it's obviously they've got to be completely naked to do it. But meanwhile, you look at like kids' TV shows or like other films that have done this similar sort of thing, you either, all your clothes become invisible or they're still like, it, it depends. It depends on whether or not the texture is like right, I guess. I think if you're making contact with something, then I think it should, like, not just like a whole, it's like if you touch a house, the house does not become then invisible. But rather, if you've got an object that you're like wielding, you know. I say wielding like a sword. Yeah, but <laughs> it's that medieval guy from earlier. Um, no, but yeah, if you if you're interacting with something with your hands in a way, then I think that should be going invisible as well. I agree. I think yeah. it's like the um, invisibility spell in Skyrim. What happens if you do? T- if you like touch yogurt, you cast that. <laughs> All of your armor and God. your weapon that you're wielding <coughs> are both invisible with you. Mm. You, have a sh- you just shield bash someone, but it's <laughs> it's invisible, so they just take a. <laughs> Can I just take a second? Uh, can I do a shout out? Go on. Um, can I do a shout out to the I Spy Goats? Um, they led me to a, to a very dark time in my life. Um, and they are horrible people. <laughs> and that's all I'll say on the matter. I Spy Goats? I prop, I props to I Spy Goats. Let's go. Oh dear. Yeah, the Goats of I Spy. So, <laughs> <laughs> my superpower, I've always kept this for since, since 2019, um, would be that... In the Incredibles, there's this guy who can just like ice skate everywhere. Frozone. Frozone. Yeah. I would have that. Power. Honey, where I is think it's my badass. super suit? I just <coughs> think it's so simple but so cool. So you want to be a chiromancer, an ice skater? Yeah, or someone like master of master of ice. Yeah. Just yeah. Really quite cool. And then just ice skate on that you ice. Yeah, it goes, you the, do so it goes much. the desert. Really does. <laughs> yeah. So you, so you want to wield you. ice powers? <coughs> yeah, but for the purpose of ice skating. You wouldn't want to have like a, 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 a like a rum and coke or something. It's just ah, oh, this is too like warm. Just summon an ice cube. Yeah, yeah. Just, ah, very nice. You know. Yeah. Well, I'll do thing. my ice skating and like be like, ding, here's an ice cube. <laughs> I think that's a crap power. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think there's there's uh, there's versatility. If you good at ice that. skating, it's good. I want to you know, I want to keep my drinks cold. Like if you just crack yeah. open a beer at room temperature and you just want it fridge temp, you just. <laughs> Mm. There you go. You've got. I guess there's benefits nice to that. Beer. Oh no, yeah. my ice cream's melted. Not anymore. Yeah. <laughs> you just pick it up off the floor for a kid that's just dropped it and be like, <laughs> there you go. Like ignore the flies and all the dirt on the floor. There you go. Your ice cream's back together, kid. Don't Frozone. worry, you won't get AIDS. It'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. No. Nope. Yeah. Frozone. I can't lie. It sounds like you're targeting children a lot. <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, you're just helping out kids that f- they've dropped they've their dropped ice creams, their ice creams. <laughs> at one that was mega sauce. <laughs> <laughs> mega sauce. Oh. Okay, here's a question then. Would you rather always have to say what's on your mind or never speak again? I might be on the spectrum, so I'd do that anyway. Yeah, same. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Uh, I think it would be make it would make you a lot more mindful as to what your current thought process is if you did have to say what was on your mind a lot. You know, you would also make a lot of enemies. You would, yeah. <laughs> Not really, because most of the time, like, <laughs> I don't know about you, but you're inter- like in a in a monologue. Like for me, I'm just walking down the street and I'm like, oh, birds, oh, traffic. Like that's all that's on my mind. Yeah, but your brain <laughs> you always thinks of like yeah. <laughs> random stuff that you would never say out loud. Mm, think about all the anti-Semitic stuff that come out. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just say you've got Tourette's. <laughs> <laughs> See, fair, I mean, it basically shout. would be a form of Tourette's, wouldn't it? Yeah. 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 If, yeah. I mean, mine page. would just be like a bunch of peep show references, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> that would be a shout. Yeah. Thing is, though, if you're thinking on your mind, why am I lying about the fact that I have Tourette's and you say that, <laughs> and you just look, you know, you're in two minds that, I don't know, being able to not speak at all, are there any loopholes with that? Would you be able to, like, I mean, people, communicate it might be, it might be like in like, the film Lyle Lyle Crocodile, where what you are you talking sing. about? You didn't watch Lyle Lyle Crocodile, did you? Film of the year. What's this? So, you're, you're a lot of weird, so man. So you can't speak, but maybe you can still sing. Yeah, that's you could sing your thoughts. So you know, there's an, you know, there's another thing that um, can help us with people that can't speak. Sign language. I will talk about that. There's stuff about sign language. There's not just one universal one. There's like Should American yeah, sign yeah. language. But why not? Why make it harder for deaf people? You know, they've got it hard enough as it is. 
Stevie, oh, he's blind. Never mind. <laughs> 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 well, then again, he's got a, he's got a song that's like I can see. <laughs> Have you seen that on TikTok? No, I'm not. Oh, it's so funny. I think I'd rather go if we if there are loopholes to the speech thing. I'd probably rather go without saying because I think some terrific, like not not terrific, <laughs> horrific thoughts. You sound like a yes. mass murderer. At the <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you can still text people. Yeah. So you could just go around saying that you're mute. Or text a speech. Do a, you'd you do know. your sponsored silence and you'd raise money for it as well. How cool would that be? And you'd just never stop being sponsored. Yeah, there you go. Well, well people think you are, you know, have a lot of difficulties. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> but it's what do you want, think to um, Queen's Pizza? You ever been? It's yeah. Nice. Yes. It's pretty so good. good. Can I have reviews, please? It's very good. I think we need to go to Queen's <laughs> Pizza. That's I think my thoughts on Queen's you've Pizza. You've not been? No, never You've been. never been? It's no. dirty and it's cheap. Dirty cheap. Yeah. I prefer yeah. Pizza like Italiano. No, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> it's a lot more flavoursome, but Queen's <laughs> Pizza... Flavoursome, <laughs> like your mum. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be fair, she is very flavoursome. Oh, that's great. <laughs> she <laughs> has a lovely <laughs> smile. She really oh. does. <laughs> anyway, so, but Queen's Pizza... We love pizza, Joanne. Love you, Joanne. buy one, get one free. So if you're yeah. drunk enough... Oh, yeah. <coughs> it's quite a good road. I don't like the chips, though. <laughs> no, the cheesy chips are dirty. You've it's got to have dirty. good chips. If, you, if you're any kind of fast food joint, you've got to have good chips. I That's the one thing that brings the, people the, back. The, the chips at Queen's are the only things I'll stand by. Mm. <laughs> but they have to be piping hot. Yeah. I prefer Pizza Palace in Sutton and Ashfield. I think that's a trip. How trip many of us have been to Pizza Palace in Sutton and Ashfield? Not been. I think Pizza Palace is a churn because there's one round for it's right next to the sundial. Oh, <laughs> sundial pizza! <laughs> we just uh, bet you, the last show of the year has got to be a trip to the Sutton Sundial. Live, I've got to do an OB at the Sutton Sundial. Yes, that's got to be that. That's <laughs> we'd probably get that. harassed by chavs, but yeah, yeah they that's fine. We'll just, just interview them. Just get radio. involved. Excuse yeah. me, what's your opinion on the Sutton Sundial pizza place? You just have them on to play. <laughs> do you do ten chicken strips and chips? <sighs> yes. Well then. Chicken strips are a golden one. You've got to do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure you can get like a box of thirty chicken wings <gasps> for quite oh, cheap. Oh, Queen's Pizza. Because uh, I know that they do halal stuff as well. Mm-hmm. But it was the first time because I asked. I, I usually ask for Satan's Pizza, which is um, ham and pineapple. <laughs> Why is that Satan's Pizza? Because no one likes it apart from me. That's just not true. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. Me and Corey. It's the one thing that we bonded over. Me and him love ham and pineapple pizza. I think we love it. It's most great. people do. To be it's fair. not bad. I think it's just. A if bit it wasn't too sweet. a popular item, it wouldn't be on every pizza menu ever. Exactly. Yeah. But anyway, but they put turkey strips instead of ham on it. That's strange. It tasted so good. It tasted better. Is that like a Christmas leftovers pizza? No, no, no. It's because it's halal. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Would you? Turkey, you it's turkey halal. Yeah. Would you turkey's rather halal. give up washing for a month? Or give up the internet for a month. Internet, easy peasy. I yeah. don't. I don't. I hate I've got to be being, clean. What do you say? Washing on the internet. What do you mean, like washing? What is wrong with you? I, w- I would give up washing. I think that is oh, crazy really for a month. I mean, for to be month. fair, I did that in lockdown. It was not fun. So I'm going to go with internet. I'd, I'd fit easily because then that that way that may you're done with Instagram feeds on Facebook feeds that you're just constantly scrolling through for no reason. Yeah, you know, but and that you're in your own time. little you're in your own little space. You you mm. the only connections you have are face to face. You know. Yeah, you can do a bit like how the eighties was. You you know <laughs> <laughs> you go you get your records. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> yeah, you get your. You get have your, you not met uh, Ryan the eighties guy? By the way. Nathan, have you oh, not I met him? him? You <laughs> need to meet him. You we'll, need to meet him. We'll He's discuss a, this more after. Oh, what are you talking break. about? We'll have to come uh, off for a second. Yeah, um, <laughs> um, anyway, so yeah, I would, I would definitely just have like an eighties month, you know. An eighties yeah. month. Yeah. The internet. No internet. Oh, do you know what? I'm annoyed by that, Tom. <laughs> You've upset me. Because then when you make a good comeback, like, hey, I'm back. Hey, I'm like, back. I say I'll do it all for charity as well. The thing is, though, with no internet, that would mean no meat and cheese. That would mean I wouldn't be able to broadcast Tom's Electronics for the month. So there's that. But I think I'd rather stay clean. You know, it just, ah, oh, I can't deal with No one listens to meat and cheese month. anyway. We'll just do it and sit here and just drink meat. <laughs> we'll just do it offline. That's true. No one does listen to this. No, we've got a massive fan base. <laughs> do you? We've actually got a Patreon. Is it in now? the tens? Tens and tens. <laughs> tens and tens. How of much people? have you got in your Patreon now? Uh, free people. Free. Yeah, free. Oh, I I think. How, How many of those funds? people are your parents? A lot of people got it for Christmas. 
what meat and cheese pizza. <laughs> Yeah, instead of gift cards, people, kids were getting the meat and cheese Patreon. It was the height and of how, much, how much money do you have on your Patreon now? <laughs> right, I'm swapping over to the pub quiz. Okay, that's probably set. better. That's Because uh, that's, uh, these Jesus impossible Christ. questions are oh, very, very possible. possible. <laughs> They're very possible questions. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. What is the name of the volcano that erupted in 79 AD? Pompeii. I think the obvious one Destroying is Pompeii. your mom. What's the name of the mountain? Your mom, yeah. The name of the... Volcano. Pompeii Vesuvius. Mount Vesuvius. Vesuvius. Mount Vesuvius. Tis, tis Vesuvius. Tis, where's Krak- tis where's Vesuvius. Vesuvius. Where's Krakatoa from? Oh, Krakatoa. I guess the wrong one, but it's the one that's that... Really it, it, Krakatoa <laughs> was the name of Squidward Tentacle's <laughs> superhero <laughs> identity. Also, it was I a volcano... <laughs> it was. It's a volcano that blew up in 1812, uh, and it caused a massive eruption that swallowed a whole island and the whole entire sky went red in the Victorian era and everyone thought it was the apocalypse. I had Very a cool. massive eruption last fact. time I was I appreciate that. It's all right. What was that? What? What, what does <laughs> scuba stand for? What was scuba diving. Scuba. <laughs> <laughs> scuba stands for scuba. Snorkeling? Of course. What does scuba stand for? What, like in the, each letter? Yeah. Scuba, swimming... Coming. Coming. <laughs> Underwater. Underwater. I'm just going to steer it back to. Uh, <laughs> Bumming. Yeah, bumming. <laughs> Do you do scuba? Ooh. Is it double O or is it just one O? I don't know. It's, it's a scuba. U. It's a U. Oh, it's a U. That's how dyslexic it's I am. It's not scuba. It's not like Scooby Doo. What does Scooby Doo stand for? Who knows? I don't know. Scooby-Doo. 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 I don't know. <laughs> it is self contained underwater breathing apparatus. Oh. oh. Yes, That's interesting. I should know that. I've got, I've got, that wasn't interesting. Right. I've got a scuba qualification. I, I'm actually allowed wow. to scuba dive. Wait, you but need, I you need don't a qualification know. to do scuba dive. Yeah, to dive, dive like safely. You yeah. can't just buy like scuba gear and be like, All right. you can. <laughs> no one's going to stop you. That's true. No one will stop no, it's you. It's like a license for like a car, so it's like you've got to learn how to <laughs> do it. You've got a scuba license. Yeah. Olive, <laughs> do you keep that in a wallet. You know, you know. Here's my driving license. <laughs> when you I don't that? drive. You go to Marsh. I don't even you drive. You go to Marsh and you show them your scuba diving <laughs> license. That's like, you don't drive, but you've got a scuba card. So what? Yeah. Yes, yeah where's Tom said when you go to Marsh and they ask for your ID? Here's my scuba card. I have to get it out sometime because it is a it's a it's a weird card does it is it issued by like the uk government or it's something? issued by the scuba uh, international company oh. also i don't, don't know the exact <laughs> word for it but it's yeah nice people yeah they're all right <laughs> could i um hit you with a would, a would you rather go on would you rather have a 150 kilogram barbell dropped on your chest say you're trying to do a bench press 150 kilogram dropped onto your chest heavy stuff or would you rather put your gooch on a treadmill at full speed for 10 minutes? I don't have a gooch, but that sounds like a good time. <laughs> uh, I'll go with the gooch. How fast is the treadmill going? Is it off? Full speed. Full speed. Full speed. It's like sandpaper. Can I rewire the circuit to make it go like... You can spit speed. on the floor a bit so it kind of... <laughs> like every now and again you get a bit of relief. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay. That's I thought you were going to say, like, do you want to dip that dill bell? Like, what you're bell. asking me is, <laughs> would I rather have a burnt gooch or broken ribs? <laughs> no, because you won't break it. Unless you're some sort of coward. <laughs> 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 you beta. Uh, <laughs> I'm not too sure, because that impact and sudden, that would put you in hospital. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Uh, but for how, yeah, uh, I'm not the strongest You'd be walking for me for a Meanwhile, a burnt yeah, gooch, you just put, like, a load of, like... Get some salvin on there. Yeah. Aloe vera. You're right. Yes, yeah. like, yeah. bit of germaline. Aloe vera, just... I feel like it's different for boys and girls, though. Well, Because well, women story. don't have much of, you know... What do you mean? There's not that much space in between. What do you mean? Well, if we're going to get into the anatomy of it... <laughs> <coughs> men have a, a large gooch, and women... They don't. <laughs> yeah. Simply put... I mean, to be fair, I'm, so used, get, I'm used to getting, like, oh, you know... Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'm used to getting carpet burned, so it's fine. I don't think German would take care of that. Yeah. No, what? that's not what I'm talking about, Corey. <laughs> what? Um, I, I think the dumbbell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about the dumbbell situation. It's a barbell. You saw, oh, who drops oh, a dumbbell? You anyway, do. next you try, question. <laughs> don't skip this. <laughs> Olive oil was the love interest of which cartoon character? Your mum. Popeye. It was Popeye. Sorry. <laughs> I was gonna try it's all right. I don't have a mum. It's fine. <laughs> Whoa! Do you actually not? <laughs> technically. What do you mean technically? Seven Can we talk about it off. Yeah. Okay, Seven hundred and fifty cool. million people worldwide tuned in to watch which wedding in nineteen eighty one? Uh, it was a uh, quick uh, Princess Queen, Diana, Diana, Diana and, and King. Can Prince you not Charles. cut me off? I was in the middle of that. I was, I was Diana getting the answer too. It was a competition. 
I'm g- I'm gonna give that to Maddie. I Thank think, you. Yeah. I'm uh, not keeping track of points, but it's yeah. fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Tom's <laughs> idea of trivia is literally. Morris and Gromit! No, Tom. I asked you about Marley and me. Like, <laughs> anyway, okay, should we play... Is this a domestic live on Earth? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, should possibly. we play Pitch Interference? Um, yeah, should we have a little song break first? Yeah, let's go. <laughs> the Queen <laughs> did kill Princess break. Diana, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> let's be honest. She got her whacked. Hello. <laughs> so I would, I would like to apologise about my comments about the Queen. I don't think she actually killed Princess Diana. <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> before, totally not. No, wait, definitely wait, nudge, nudge. Before we get into pitch interference, me and Tom <coughs> would uh, like to tell you about the pretty amazing day we had yesterday. Not yesterday, last week. Last week? Yeah. Okay. So, last week, me and Tom met up for breakfast. Yep. Um, yeah, Maddie. I had to wake him up because he was refusing to get oh, out of bed. We, 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 we found it so hard to get up that day. And we went yeah. to this, we went Weatherspoons and went to get a nice breakfast. I had a... Vegetarian full English breakfast with... And I had the Freedom Breakfast. The Freedom Breakfast. Yeah. Yeah, that's It like used to be called the American Breakfast, but they changed it to Freedom. Yeah. So America's all about freedom, you see. Yeah. <laughs> <I'd> <laughs> they are. I wanted to try yeah. it, but it, was, it wasn't it was in uh, vegetarian. It's all in meat version. Um, but yeah. That's how you said meat. Um, Just like <laughs> really aggressively. But I got one of them refillable coffees. <clears throat> They're great, the refillable stuff. Me and stuff. Corey actually shared that. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> do you have a job what are you sharing coffee with people for because it's refillable I was like don't buy one yourself mate we can share it yeah we saved uh, a quid there yeah and we both took our shoes off didn't we <laughs> yeah we did actually because we wanted to be more comfortable and it was raining so our feet were quite wet yeah so we took the shoes off which yeah. spoons was it it was the high cross fair it's not the yeah. best one. Corn exchange is better. No way. We can see it. It looks one. nicer. But we was like, we'll go high. I appreciate. Across. I like the two floors because mm. we're gonna go shopping after. I mean, personally, I don't really like the market right outside. It is a bit dodge, but it like, it's a bit dodge. But other than that, it's a beautiful weather spoons. I once had a Porsche man start fight with me outside that weather spoons. But yeah, someone oh, um fares. So mm. what? Because we had our shoes off, we both went up to the coffee machine because Corey couldn't <laughs> um, do it. And why? Why was that the coffee machine? Someone took Corey's shoes. Yeah. What? <laughs> what? You had your shoes now. Uh, you got your shoes stolen in one of spoons. I that, did. That's hilarious. Yeah. Why, why did you take your shoes off as well? Just I mean, initially, <laughs> I thought that <laughs> I'd just really misplaced fun? them because it seems like something I'd do. Yeah. Did you not re- wait, these so I went and asked at the bar if anyone had seen them. <laughs> but why did you take your shoes off? Because or did you have a second pair of shoes? <sighs> we'll, we'll I didn't have a second we'll pair of shoes. We, we went to Sketchers, didn't we, to buy another pair? Yeah, because me. Cor- what were you me? wearing on your feet? Like Cor- <laughs> you went to Sketchers. Right, socks. Me- I didn't take my <laughs> socks off, Maddie. <laughs> me and Corey have the In same the shoes. Me and Corey have the same <laughs> shoes. We both have these. Like I'll show you them. We both have these. Oh, you both got those shoes. And Corey kept trying to say, "Can I have one of your shoes, or can I?" <laughs> I mean, that's what we did. We ended up linking arms and hopping <laughs> <laughs> to Sketchers. <laughs> so. Sitting down every now and then to take a break. <laughs> we got a lot of weird legs. looks. So when we was in Skechers, like I was like being a bit picky. I was like, "Don't get them, Corey. Yeah. They're a bit expensive." I mean, it helps that we're both size fourteen. Yeah, you both got a size fourteen. No, they don't. Shoe. They've got both size nines. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and then so while we was looking at these shoes, we saw this guy um, come past, tall guy. And he was holding a pair of shoes. And I was like, <laughs> Corey, <laughs> are they yours? But mum has got your shoes. So me and Corey leave sketches, hopping. <laughs> like, hey, hey, why have you got his shoes? <laughs> oh, no. Why well, right, did you have my shoes, Nathan? <laughs> <laughs> I needed a fresh pair. <laughs> <laughs> and you can George, to be fair, mate, that's your fault for leaving them. <laughs> in, in you can't leave shoes in weather spoons and not expect them to get stolen. Why did you take stolen. your shoes off in spoons? Did you just feel like, oh, I'm going to go, well, just, oh, natural. It was, it was to let my feet breathe a bit, you know. Uh, but in weather spoons, oh, that's, that's grim. I was going to say, they're not going to breathe any, any good air. It's yeah, no, that's, that's food, dirty so air for so sure. So, how, much, than how much did it cost us to get the shoes back off this guy? Wait, he took his shoes off. Your shoes off of you. <laughs> you paid to get your shoes back. This guy said, I quote, Finders, keepers, losers, sweepers. Brilliant. <laughs> so you had to pay a ransom for your own shoes back. <laughs> Do you mean losers, weepers, not losers, sweepers? That's what he said. Losers, sweepers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I think he. I think he might have been under the influence. Also, um, six ninety nine later, no you got your shoes back. Well, I gave I, him I a ten pound note and a five pound note. 
So I ended Generous. up spending fifteen pounds, <laughs> which works out at seven fifty per shoe. You spent yeah. fifteen quid on your own shoes. <laughs> 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 did at least clean them, or is it just like? Why would I clean them? No, but did he? Never mind. And he didn't clean them, did he? He was someone who stole with his <laughs> shoes. Sta- Ooh, shoes. From Weatherspoons as well. Um, and that's not very Andrew Tip. We obviously yeah. got his Instagram and that. Um, you got his Instagram. Why did you get his Instagram? Well, we're just chatting yeah. for a bit while Corey is <laughs> mumbling in his wallet trying to get this ten pound note. And this guy was like, "This guy wanted him to pay in coins as well." I was like, "Wasn't his name something like Idris Elba or something <laughs> like that?" That's what he said. Yeah, he said his name is Idris Elba. It, yeah. So the Idris Elba ransom. You had to you pay your own ransom for your shoes back. From the Weatherspoons. Fifteen pounds, yeah. Fifteen quid. Sounds like the worst episode of Luther I've ever seen. <laughs> 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 it's, I, I didn't I remember seeing that in Rock and Roller, I'll be honest. And hmm. so we got the shoes back, we got his Instagram. <laughs> Turns out they weren't my shoes. But was it his Instagram? Did you just pay it fifteen was his Instagram, quid for yeah. Idris Elba's Instagram? <laughs> well <laughs> Because my shoes were black with a little S on, and these were black with a little Z on. So they were knockoff sketches. <sighs> yeah. You sure you weren't looking in a mirror as you put them on? And I like, might oh, have that's been. an S. And it's actually a Z. Yeah. But they might have been sketches. Sketches. No, sketches. 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 Sketches, yeah. Knockoff. Knockoff yeah. shoe. Z sketches. Z sketches. Sketches. Very nice. Very nice. So then we decided to go. <coughs> um, so hang on. You paid for your own pair of shoes back. And Idris Elba's Instagram You're still account. on that? Wait, no, how could I forget about that? Um, so you had to walk from the High Cross no, we hopped. To, to the High Cross we itself barefoot. We hopped. Did you give him one of your shoes, Tom? Yeah, I, I was... It, he, he, What he did, when he saw he had no shoes, he tried to take this mine. This is Lester's And I was like, hey, 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 no, mate. He said, FM. he said, mead and cheese, we're in this together. We've got to share one, one. And so I felt a bit bad after a while. We did hop. I also bought a keyboard from Cash Exchange. Yeah. For how much? 30 quid. 30 quid. Not Cash? Bad. Was, it an, was it a MIDI keyboard or was it a sort of a weighted one? It was a MIDI keyboard. Uh, was it a bit little little mini MIDI keyboard? It was decent enough, wasn't it? Yeah. Full-size keyboard. It was big enough. Yeah. Like a grand piano, 89 keys. It, no, not, not lot. that big. No. no. Not little, for 30 quid. Little mini 32 key one. Probably, with yeah. The, with the buttons on the top, the little, like, the... Oh, the drum pad buttons. The drum pad on yeah, the top, yeah. yeah it's got those. For uh, programming, yeah. You got a haircut out of his sack as well from that guy. From that, so what, from Idris Elba? <laughs> no, this, this was another guy. This is another guy. Um, he was he was wearing a hoodie. And he, he said, he said, I'll give you a haircut. And I was like, Corey, don't do that, mate. And then we just sort of... Did he actually just want to trim your leg hair? No, he... Gave him a haircut. Oh, we could proper His haircut. hair was quite long. Um, Wait, so you let a random man on the street cut your hair? Stole your shoes. He was offering it for free. And you. But it was a trainee hairdresser, he said. Did, how much of. So, what style. If you got your hair cut, what style of hair did you go for? Did you just go for a, a full buzz cut? Cause, or did you ask Th- for this, something? This then... hair here, what he's got, it was only cut like last week. So. Mm. Not and bad. It looks good, doesn't it? It looks good. Solid. Yeah, for free haircuts, a free haircut. Yeah. Oh, I, cut, I, I won't tell you about the time I cut my own hair. That was really fun. That was awful. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen a man with like bat, like the worst haircut. Then you what came did in we do, and it, Tom? Oh, we're still on that. <laughs> um, Idris Elba ransomed his shoes back to Corey. <laughs> then a man in a hoodie got a haircut. Well, this ha- haircut guy, we got chatting to him. And he yeah. gave, gave us a business card. What was his name? <laughs> Charlie Sheen or something like that? <laughs> Charlie Sheen. Are you just making this up? <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah, Charlie Sheen. You win right. the game. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yes. You won. <laughs> what? You won, it's man. a game we play every now and then on Mead and Cheese. You just make stuff up. Where we just start telling lies <laughs> until someone asks, are you making this up? Or you're lying. Yeah. So what you're saying is that you're not a vegetarian based off of your vegetarian spoon. Some of it is true. Did you get your shoes stolen? A bit of truth in there. No. No, I didn't get my shoes stolen. Oh, okay, stole. fair enough. I was about to have a conversation with you after the show. I'm like, Corey, you can't just let people take your shoes. <laughs> you can't <laughs> take your spoons off, your shoes off in a spoon. I didn't take my shoes off in spoons. No. Did someone give you a haircut outside? No. I'll be honest, right. I was just curious to see how long it would go on. You did buy a keyboard, though. Did buy a keyboard, yeah. Um, we did go and look at sketches. But didn't meet Charlie Sheen. 
That's a shame. Yeah, it's it's no <laughs> no interest. <laughs> well, he's a big fan of meat yeah. and cheese. Oh, is he? So I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> Who'd you hear from? <laughs> <laughs> it just over. <laughs> oh, golden. But yeah, that was um Would I Lie to You, our original segment. The answer <laughs> yes, they yes. would. And you Nathan won. Warned. Thank you. So as the winner, Nathan, you're gonna get the first opportunity to pick the uh sing for pitch invasion. Oh okay, cool. Pitch. In what f- now, sorry? <laughs> pitch pitch impulse. Pitch impulse. Pitch interpose. Pitch interference. Pitch interjection. Pitch, pitch interference. Pitch in play. Objectional pitching. Pitch insert name here. <sighs> <laughs> the pitch game. <laughs> Can we just stick to the pub quiz for a little bit before we do... No, no, object. no! You, we will not pitch do it, what. We're not doing this pitch not your show. This is our show. This is the mead and cheese show. It's not the mead and cheese. So and Tom's got mad with power. And Paddy, <laughs> because of that, you're going to go first. Oh God! Okay. I thought I get to choose. Okay, you choose who goes first. Maddie. <laughs> <laughs> so you will be pitching to us a superhero film, mm-hmm. but they need to have a power that is massively flawed, in the mm-hmm. vein of. They can only fly a metre off the ground. <laughs> or they can shapeshift, but they have the same level of fitness as when they're a human. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. You have two minutes. When we shout pitch interjection, mm-hmm. we get to interject <laughs> on that pitch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> okay, I'm just going to set a timer. You have one hour. One hour? <laughs> one hour? <laughs> <laughs> You have two minutes, starting now. Okay, there's this uh, guy, we're going to... Pitch interjection. Yes. <laughs> What's He's his so name? Annoying. Can his name be Keith? No. Yes, his name is Keith. Keith what? Keith. Keith the Keith. Keith the Keith the Keith. Yeah, that's fine. I haven't even started yet. It's like... Okay, so Keith the Quiche (laughs) is a young kid at school. He's about 19. You know, he's an average run-of-the-mill American child. And one day, he accidentally spills some strange liquid on himself. Pitch interjection. Uh Uh-huh. What liquid? I don't know. Super. Yeah, exactly. Your mum's. (laughs) Where'd he get it from? Your (laughs) mum. Yep. (laughs) Daft question. (laughs) Carry on. Um... Suddenly, he discovers, obviously, the miracle of puberty happens, and he's suddenly... At 19. (laughs) At 19. (laughs) Relatable for all men, yeah. (laughs) And um, he suddenly realises he's really, really fast, yeah? Running, doing his chores. But then he ends up meeting this lovely girl, and he ends up falling in love, and then he realises he's a little too fast. Oh, no. Oh, He's fast no. at everything. Oh no! <laughs> and the constant struggle of being a little bit too fast. A constant struggle. A constant struggle. <laughs> yeah, a constant struggle. Sorry, Nathan. Do you have a pitch interjection you'd like to make? No, I just wanted to make a pun about cum. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we follow him through the rest of his life, Sorry. trying to be a superhero, trying to have pitch interjection. Yep. How long is the rest of his life? Does he also age fast? Oh. Oh. It's like that old Xbox advert with the baby. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't he doesn't age that fast. He just he just really is fast. He's an average human other than being mega quick. Being mega quick in all sense of the regard, especially in bed. <laughs> Pitch interjection. Uh-huh. Lawyer Tom Gibbs. <laughs> <laughs> has has seen this guy doing everything fast and says hello <laughs> I'm Tom Gibbs <laughs> I'm a lawyer and I've got loads and loads of files we don't have the internet because I'm doing the one book without internet thing <laughs> <laughs> and I need some help filing all these things I'll be your mentor in the law if you file all my he does it really documents. quick does He's it really quick does he yeah how quick Super quick. He's just he's just quick. Give me okay. Times. He's he can he's managed to go through college and get like a load of PhDs. He's that quick with it. In out can take in knowledge. Really really smart. But the one thing he can't do and the one thing he really wants to do 
he just can't. Pitch interjection. Because it's too quick. Officer quick. Nathan Gunn Hello. comes over to Keith the Quiche and says, I've caught you speeding <laughs> and I'm going to send you down for it. What happens next? He goes to jail. <laughs> <laughs> But he's really quick, so he ends up leaving jail. <laughs> anyway, he spends the rest of his life trying to, you know, find a woman that he cares about because he's a very romantic person. But he can never find the right one because he's always too quick. Pitch invasion. Yep. Pitch what now? <laughs> <laughs> Lawyer Tom <laughs> Gibbs <laughs> is slowing down. Mm-hmm. In life, yeah. In life. He's got old and he's 62 and he's like... 62? No, no, no. He's more like at least 70. That's a decent, like, old age. He Uh, suddenly realises that now he's slowed down. He can finally have what he's always wanted, a family. Because he can slow down enough. (laughs) Because bear in mind, it's not just him that's fast. It's also his other things are a bit too fast. What's a message? Pitch strike... (laughs) <laughs> but no one wants to go out with him anymore because he's old and wrinkled what's the and moral, disgusting what's the moral message what how fast are his wrinkles really fast and how does this they re- jiggle how does this represent the importance of the american nuclear family <laughs> well it's more of a struggle of not having one and and do you think that struggle means that is this you know like any like hope at the end where he finds the american nuclear family yeah why do you keep talking about the American nuclear family? It's important. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay who's going to play him? Um, <clears throat> Harry Styles. <laughs> nice. Who's going to direct this film? You. Christopher Nolan. Who's going to... Are you shooting on film or... No, oh, shut up. Or, or, or digital? <laughs> um, I think Christopher Nolan will choose that. It's down to him. It's his creative... Vision. Vision, yeah. yeah there you go. Okay. What aspect ratio will this film be? <coughs> Not in 4.3. Um, no, it would be 4.3. It would oh, be in... Fast, but he's not it would be in wide. IMAX, I guess. Nice. If you want to really go there. Okay. You Any other specifics? 30 seconds left. Any spe- other specifics? What's, tell us the ending. He dies sad and alone and surrounded by lots of his fans, but none of them are like women. What, so. what charity are you going to try and raise money for? Boys who come quick. <laughs> uh, actually, no, erectile dysfunction. ED. Yeah. Pitch. Interjection. <laughs> Interjection. <laughs> you have to think that. <laughs> Pitch time. Um, Pitch time. Can he have a pet snail called Colin? Yes. Nice. You have eight seconds left. Tell us anything. He can't work his thing. What's the title of this movie? So it's a pitch invasion, just before the time went off. Um, Pitch what now? (laughs) Pitch interjection. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, man. Keith goes too quick. Okay. That's the log line. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> if that you want that as title, just film student thing. Speedy, oh, no. Speedy Keith. I don't know, Speedy Keith. Spe- the quiche. Speedy Keith. <laughs> the quiche. Okay. <laughs> Speedy Keith. <laughs> Thank you very much. I like Ma- how the whole the quiche thing plays into nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Wasted Maddie. character potential. <laughs> um, that was a very good story. Yeah. Um, we shall. We won't deliberate here. We will continue going forwards, yes. way forwards yes. to. Nathan. Nathan. Hello. You get to decide who goes next. I'll go next. Okay. Cool, cool. You have two minutes starting now. What am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what are we doing? <laughs> You're pitching a superhero film where the main character has a superpower that is very flawed. Like being... Too quick to too quick have or, a lover. Or having only ten <laughs> sure, seconds. Okay, if you just come out on the spot, that's pretty good. It's not bad, is uh, it? Joe, that, was yeah. pretty, that was pretty good. <clears throat> um, so, you got two minutes. Okay, so the, the superpower I was thinking about giving, because I like the idea of like being able to control time. Yeah. What about if you can only control time for about ten seconds at a time? So he always gets himself caught up in little, little rascally moments. Pitch time. Yeah. 
What's the uh, <laughs> cool down timer on this power? Oh, he can do it. He can do it every five minutes. Every five minutes. Yeah. So if he controls time to send himself back to the 80s, yep. he can send himself back to the present in five minutes. Mm-hmm. Or does he have to wait until he gets back to the present and then five minutes after he used the power? Oh, no, it's every time it he uses it. Every time he uses it. So he can use it five minutes. And does it only last five minutes? No, it can last as long as he wants, but it only works for ten seconds. Mm. Cool. Okay, time continues. And in these misadventures that he gets himself on as a mischievous scoundrel, he gets himself stuck because his powers only work in the modern day. Okay. So he, try, he goes too far. He goes back into the Victorian era. Ooh. And he gets himself stuck with his... Pitch... Um, interjection. Interjection. Yeah, thank you there. Um, <clears throat> would he be at risk for any possible Victorian diseases, Absolute. a.k.a. Ab- syphilis? Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Pitch interruption. <laughs> <laughs> Are the people in the Victorian times at risk of the diseases he brings with him also? We don't have that many diseases in comparison to the Victorian era. What are you talking about? We are probably carrying loads of diseases that we've we built immunities to over the years. That if you go communities back to the, are immunities. Immunities. That if you Both. go back to the Victorian times, they won't have those immunities. They had polio. They used to put we polio don't in the have street, polio though. anymore. Yeah, they probably die. We would bar- we'd die from polio. We're more likely to die from their diseases. Yeah, but than I think it was better living conditions back then, on account that there wasn't your mum. <laughs> To be fair, that is a that is a that is a good one. I just I cannot believe you spent that entire time setting that up. Right, I'm giving way back to Nathan. (laughs) What? Okay, so our our, um, protagonist is stuck in the Victorian era. His name is Nathan, just because I can't bother thinking. Who's playing him? Um, Pitch interjection. Yeah, interaction. (laughs) (laughs) Um. Ryan Gosling. Nice. Pitch Pic- Isosceles. <laughs> What's his last name? Gunner. Nathan Gunner. <laughs> Sounds original. <laughs> Nathan Not gonna that. do what? <laughs> 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 Your mom. <laughs> Bev. Cool. Okay. <laughs> Continue. So he gets stuck in the he gets stuck in the Victorian era because. Um, it's powers only work because of the electromagnetic field that uh, the Wi-Fi brings mm-hmm. and the 5G towers. All of them. <laughs> <laughs> Along with other things, apparently. <laughs> um, and then when he's stuck there, he bumps into the Queen. The queen... Pitch. <laughs> pitch in defence. <laughs> Which Queen? <laughs> uh, it'd be Elizabeth I, wouldn't it? She's, she's a Victorian Queen. Uh, yeah. That's Tudor, babes. Are you sure? It's Victoria thinking of. It is Victoria that's the Queen of Yeah, I wonder who the Queen was. Hence the the reason Victoria. (laughs) Victoria. (laughs) No, I I might (laughs) have the idea of there being the Victorian times without Victoria. That's quite funny. (laughs) So I'll keep it. (laughs) Elizabeth the first. I apologise, my history knowledge is not what it should be. Oh, God. Uh, That and the uh, Canon Red Stripes not helping. Continue. (laughs) (laughs) And in his misadventures with the Queen, Queen TBC. Um, hang on, I'm getting prompts. Of <laughs> <laughs> the Victorian era. You have about 25 <laughs> seconds left. Uh, and then he has to defend the Queen from an assassination attempt. Pitch um, interruption. Mm-hmm. Sir Tom Gibbs comes <laughs> round. Sir Tom Gibbs? Sir Tom Gibbs. Oh. And he runs over to Nathan Gunner. Hello, sir. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I am the servant in line to the throne. Yeah. And you look like a man who likes some money. <laughs> Rude. The Queen is running the Victorian kingdom into dismay. I would like you to kill the Queen and help me take the throne. And you will be my assistant throne and I'll give you two... Assistant g- throne? Pitching on a pitch... A pitch thing within a pitch thing. Yeah. Is is Very you're trying it. to get Nathan Gunner to be this man's throne. Assistant throne. <laughs> and Assistant throne. And he gives you a, bog, a bag of gold and a chicken. <laughs> what, 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 what is Nathan Gunner do? Nathan Gunner plays both sides. He takes the bag of gold and the chicken, 
but <laughs> because he's got a good moral compass in the end he comes back around and he kills the guy that gives him the chicken pitch ingle mouse um <laughs> princess of wales maddie forster comes over <laughs> and says hello i'm maddie forster and i want wales to be the main country in the world <laughs> what does nathan <laughs> gonna do about that he says, "Don't be so ridiculous. Wales is a is a conquered nation, and I will always be that. It's a principality at best. <laughs> at least I know my history. You know, at least I'm not getting confused. <laughs> Good job, <laughs> man. <laughs> I mean, Queen Elizabeth in the Victorian era is like, you know. Uh, sorry, I'm going to pitch Queen as well. Elizabeth the first. Was it, is there Elizabethan era? Yes. Yes, that's when Elizabeth the first was ruling. The, it's called the Golden Era. For real? Yes. Show me." No, I'm not saying I don't believe you, I'm just saying. We will discuss the Elizabethan era later on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Which first one? you must finish your pitch. Pitch interruption. L. L. Corey Wesk marches into the throne room. Shakespeare, man. Oh, Shakespeare. Oh, yeah. Pitch Sha- interaction. Oh. Yeah, all of work. That makes so much sense now. Sorry. L. of... Sutton. I have autism. Okay. The Earl of Sutton. There's autism and there's autism, man. <laughs> mm, I have autism. I apologize. Maybe yeah. autism is just a superpower. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And not knowing <laughs> the Victorian era isn't. Oh, God. <laughs> the Earl of Sutton comes in. <laughs> and says, I have a message from the Pope saying that this drink we all enjoy, Mead. Catholics. The Pope says that it, it won't be drunk in the future. Nathan, Gunner, you look like the sort of man who could set set course and help us avoid Mead not being drunk anymore. <laughs> what is this? Are you sponsored by Mead? We wish. <laughs> what do you say to the Earl of Sutton? Um, I say fine. Don't worry, mate. I can I can amend this. There will be a, a show in the future run by students. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be listened to by tens of people <laughs> and tens and tens and tens of people it'll be listened to by tensing I, I imagine he might listen every now and again but only when he's on let's be honest uh, so okay pitch indigo <laughs> 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 the king of France Hugo <laughs> has um, declared that there will be war with the whole world unless Nathan Gunner <laughs> goes back to where he came from with help from Nathan that Tesla. sounds listen mate I can't go back to where I came from. I was born in Rotherham. <laughs> and that doesn't exist. No, it does. <laughs> it might as well not. <laughs> it's not exactly Milton Keynes. It's not far off. <laughs> I went to Milton Keynes the other day, actually. Really? Yeah, yeah. I, did, I thought it didn't exist. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Apologies. Um, uh, so, am I still talking? Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, basically, he's still... <laughs> He's just hanging about. He's foiled. He's foiled the Queen's assassination attempt, and now he's bringing me to the people of oh, the future, past, and the present. Nice. And that is the that is the overarching story. So who's the director? The director, uh, Guy Ritchie. Um, and Again? What? Yeah, I like Guy Ritchie movies. What are you shooting on film or digital? <laughs> digital. What digital. aspect ratio? Uh, four three for the flashback scenes. Who's there you DOP? Go. Me, obviously. Um, who's your, who's your best boy? Yeah, who's your... <laughs> who's your best who's boy? Who's your script girl? My script girl, Megan, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> and, um... My best boy... I don't know, do you know, uh, do you know, do you know any electricians? I know, like... I don't know, actually. Tim Jackson. <laughs> just say Tim Jackson. It'd probably That'd be help funny. if Nathan Gunner knew an electrician. Nathan Gunner <laughs> does know an electrician. Do you know what his name is? What? Corey Westing. <laughs> nice. He can be the best boy. So Tom Gibbs, oh. Gibby, you are the only person left to go. Oh boy, let's get. Do you understand creative. the pitch brief? I understand the pitch interjection interposal brief. It's a nightmare. Okay. You've got to get the creative thoughts going, though. You, goodness me, you may go. <laughs> All right then. Okay, so I'm telling the story of uh, Lord Alec Jackson uh, from Ooh. a different time. Pitch Interpol. <laughs> From which time? From a time similar to our own, uh, but maybe about 20 years back from now. So this is, what, 2000? Early 2000s. <laughs> Early 2000s, <laughs> Early 2000s, yeah. 2000s or so. Um, so which I was you... alive for. Yes, yeah. yeah likewise. Uh, and Little this, babies. And this this young man is from, from some 
benign, unbeknown reason, has developed the power to teleport, uh, but only at 30 feet at a time with each casting or each action of teleporting. Uh, and so, you know, and you're useful in a pinch, uh, you know, and he realises this about as he's going into school, you know, you can sort of walk from one end of the playground to the other. All the other kids are either fascinated or they don't like him for this. Um and we'll jump forward to when he's about six years old or so, and he comes across some, some big kids in the playground. Pitch, um, torpedo. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Pitch torpedo, let's go. Um, who who plays young Thomas and who plays old Thomas? Uh, young Tom will be played by uh, Macaulay Culkin. Okay. Because it's 2003, so it still passes a child actor, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. Uh, we'll of course have to dye his hair. He'll still have brown hair, and he'll still have a gorgeous. Even at six, he'll have a gorgeous set. Of, you know, a good, gorgeous set of facial hair. Even at six years old, you know, it's well, just a younger incarnation of the the Tom Jackson we know today. Pitch Islam. Who plays the older Tom Jackson? Uh, that will be played by Corey. <laughs> nice. Corey will with a, with his own fantastic set. We've got got to match Tom's, of course. I would have gone with Chuck Norris. If you get who's going to do Corey's hairdressing for getting his hair cut to be like mine? Corey's hair is going to be done by big wigs. <laughs> <laughs> Let's think. Corey's hair is going to be done by Idris Elba. Why not? Okay. Nice. And he's also going to be his um his shoe salesman. <laughs> For some reason, you know, he's, he's, everyone's got to have a side hustle, you know. He's multi-talented. Yeah. Yeah. Multi-talented. Yeah, multi-talented. Multi-talented. He's a shoe salesman by night. By day, he's a hairstylist. Okay. He's Corey's hairstylist. Okay. Your time continues. Yeah, the floor is yours. And he gets approached by these these big kids. They say, hey, mate, we don't like what you do. At six, they're, so they're all six years <laughs> old and they all talk like that. All the big kids are going, hey, we don't like this, mate. We, you're <laughs> dotting around the playground and we're not a fan of that. And we think you ought to learn a lesson or two. Uh, the, the, this is being this guy's being played by uh, Nathan Gunn. Uh, Thank you. In 2003, so <laughs> I'm a young boy. Indeed, just I'm got five to, years old. Start believe. your old young acting career off strong with with this big kid role. Uh, <laughs> and it's at this point in the film that a young uh, a young Lord Tom his first name is Lord, I should say. <laughs> a Lord of what? Lord of where? He's Lord of himself. No, oh, nice. <laughs> Very few people are. Um, and you know, pitch and this, interface. Interface. Is he related to Lord the singer? Potentially, if we if if much of us known of Lords, in, I don't know how old Lord would be in two thousand and three, but not very imagine, old. We can imagine they're related in some way, distant siblings. But Lord can't teleport. It's only our Lord in the story that can teleport. It's only Lord that it's can only, teleport. It's only Lord, Lord that can teleport, yeah. and not Lord exactly. Okay, cool. And I'm glad we've all cleared that up. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and so this, Worst this, invaluable time. This, that's the plan. <laughs> <laughs> about 30 seconds left. So the, uh, he learns that, you know, his emotions get the better of him. He's scared to death of these big kids, a lady led by Nathan Gunn. Uh, um, <laughs> and he discovers that the range of his teleportation can change, you know, by quite incremental amounts, depending on the scale of his emotions. Uh, and so he gets so scared that he doesn't just teleport 30 feet across the playground. He, you know, he goes st- out of the schoolyard and straight back to his house at that point. And he's so scared for his life, this little six-year-old, you know, that he's back home. And his lunch break, and he's like, what on earth's happened? We'll give you another 15 seconds to... Yeah, we'll yeah. let you end the story. Yeah. His mum's doing his washing, and he's like, Lord, what are you, what, what, you're back so soon from school. What, could you explain yourself? He's like, I don't know, Mum, in the bank. He talks like that now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll leave it there as a, on a cliffhanger. There's a kid crying as, the, as it cuts to black for insert film name. You here. know how I would have ended it? I would have him teleport into the middle of the ocean and drown. <laughs> <laughs> or he hasn't drowned because he'd rather breathe underwater. Okay, so <laughs> p- p- pitch invasion. Interjection. Yeah. Interruption. Yeah, pitch. All of the above. Interracial. P- pitch. Uh, <laughs> interracial. <laughs> pitch. We just got a warning insight into Corey's um, <laughs> internet history. Um, who's the director? Uh, this film is being directed by Maddie Forster. Okay. Um, oh, why not? Okay. Uh, sure. <laughs> uh, is, is, she, is she in on film or aspect rate? Uh, film or digital? Uh, it's gonna be. It's gonna be film. You know, it's two thousand and three. It's still. We're still starting to learn the digital age. Yeah. Got to give it that rustic look. What aspect ratio? Uh, 
four three always. You know, nice. everyone was a lot wider in two thousand and three. Yeah. So what you went for a we're going a for realism here. Exactly yeah. a filler, literally. No, th- it was it was thinner. Four three is thinner than sixteen nine. Is it? Oh, is it? Yeah. Not, does it not stretch it out. No, no. Four no. three is like a it's like a box. Ha- ooh, ooh. Almost rectangular. <laughs> Ooh. Squarish, from my point, so. how, That's how is the nu- nuclear family represented in this film? Nuclear family is represented by the uh, mum of Lord screaming at him as yeah. the film cuts to black, saying, and "Why is he home from school early?" That's bad, and that's finally. Oh, she's she's American. She's like, "What? What are you doing?" Here? Yeah. <laughs> finally, who plays the mum? Uh, your mum. <laughs> nice. nice, nice, nice. I think that is. A good pitch. Okay, I think me and Tom will deliberate on yeah. the. That's the creative juices used until February. Interfaces that we just heard. <laughs> and while we do, you can listen to a nice song. I'll just pull a random song. There we go. Twilight World. We are back on Mead and Cheese, and we have just played Pitch into Discussion, <laughs> which is a new game that we are playing for the first time on the show. Yep. Property um, of mead and cheese, is it not, boys? Hundred percent. So. That's what our legal advice says, Tom Gibbs. Yes, legal yep. advisor, of, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I'm under contract to be very careful here. <coughs> yeah, yeah, very, very careful. Indeed. Not and having any. Th- <laughs> and after a great game of pitch indecisiveness, I think me and Tom have decided who the winners are. Are you ready? Ooh. Winners. So in oh. third place is. Buddy! Oh, thanks, guys. Hey. Yay! Which means the winner is. <laughs> Tom Gibbs! So, Nathan, you came second. Well, hey. that's can not I, bad. Can, yeah. I, can I be really honest? <coughs> I'd feel hard done by if I was Maddie. <laughs> <laughs> I think hers was the better of the, th- of the three. Like, I was like, mine was like a, what you call it, like a really drama esque mm. mental psychology film about how. Like a man who goes too fast. I was going yeah, through. but you know, it felt too, too, like real. It Don't say real. Close yeah. To home, you know? <laughs> yeah, it was good. I just, I liked Tom Gibbs' story. I just, I didn't liked, even hear Tom's. I was went for a bit of a Scorsese approach. I'll be honest. You know, yeah. be about uh, the, sh- the film would be about what three and fish and half, vibes or no, just a bit, just really long. Like you know, the film would be three and a half hours. Mm. You know, well, Tom. Easy. As the Three and a half winner, hours. Yeah. As easy. the winner of that <laughs> big story to tell it, <laughs> you now get to uh, tell the rest of the story. Oh goodness me! How long we got? Uh, <laughs> About a minute. So he gets home. Okay. The Lord, he's quivering in his boots, and he's everyone just else teleported. We're going to do the music. Oh, yeah. Very syncopated drum beat here. Yeah. Very nice. Sounds like a horse. Um, <laughs> But yes, he's just teleported home and he's, he's quivering in his know. boots. He's quivering in his boots. <laughs> <laughs> he's actually just doing it. Oh, this is, this is scary. So he's in his boots. He's scared and he's, and he's this is he's new for him. He's never gone so far with his teleportation before. He's never gone so far. And his mum's like... Tom, Tom, dinner's ready. Trying to get to the bit where she It's one o'clock. His mum's doing his washing. His American mum, I should add. Yeah. He's shouting at him, saying, What are you doing? What are you doing? You're open school, so really sad. Oh, it's not the oh, Lord, say, I don't know, mummy. I don't know what's happening. This big mean. They're trying to murder me. This big mean kid named Nathan came and tried to beat me up. He speaks really gruff for a six year old for some reason. Um, yeah. I'm muting my mic. What the hell? <laughs> Um, but you know, the moment hits, he's like, "Go to your room, go to your room, whatever." <laughs> yeah, so, so off he goes. He doesn't try to go back to school in any way. This is some rather intense soundtrack here. <laughs> <laughs> you, you hired us as a composers. <laughs> it will happen. What's that? I didn't know you could take that off. Corey's just sawing a bit of wood at the moment. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> You need to tell us the rest of the story, man. I'm just mesmerised by the amount of, of creativity with the soundtrack and all the instruments that are surrounding you, it. Come on, it'd be all done by uh, the Nethercots anyway. Yeah, it would. This is true. Toss up between him, those and Ham Zimmer. Mm. Both very similar budgets. Yes, very, very, very similar. similar. Do you know that Ham Zimmer um, was the 
piano player for um, the song Radio oh, Star. Story. Yeah, he was. Maddie. I did not know Story. Yeah. Maddie, you're cool. full of, you're full a, of I, useful facts That was tonight. a fantastic I want to tell that to Maddie, everyone. I think we yes. should hear some more. Isn't that right? I think we should. Oh. Uh, so we're muting everyone well. but Tom. Oh, goodness me. We're, we're the only one here, folks. Not even the hosts of the show are being broadcast at the moment. Oh, he also did the soundtrack for the bar. Maddie, movie. shut up. <laughs> So he's up to so he's stomping up to his room because he's just indirectly or without you know realizing it just teleported home a, a brave distance a distance never covered by his weird ability before uh, and he's like what, the, what on earth has happened you know he's he's questioning things why has he not been beaten up why is his mum cross why is his mum doing his washing now of all things it's an evening job everyone knows this uh, you know it's a sort of a, a journey of discovery for him and you know what uh, that's what i'm aiming for with the story eventually it's as i said it goes on for a while but it comes you know, it comes to that you can learn to control his powers in like, in a way to get to the distances he might want to achieve with his weird teleportation uh, and the more intense his emotions are the further he can travel with each with each you know each each shot instead of just crossing the road he could cross like into the county border Gosh, he no. crossed the bristol channel mm-hmm. go from the south of wales down to uh, lovely sunny devon you know if he fancies an ice cream yeah a cream tea the right way uh, and then back across so so how does this end then yeah well it ends the the ends the, the film franchise because there'll be multiple films as, as we expect of course yeah based off of the lord's the lord's powers yeah um, it ends on a cliffhanger, but it, it's not like a sort of an intense... The whole series ends on a cliffhanger? The whole series, but not in an intense sort of you're dying to know way, and just sort of that his story isn't, isn't wrapped up and there's, there's no closure to his, his, the end of his tale. That seems somewhat dissatisfying. It does. I, the aim would be to leave it a bit ambiguous as to, you know, what adventures will he go on next, you know, that sort of thing. Mm. In a way, it just it's not a, not a, not an unnecessary sequel spawning way, but just one that you know is a story about a part of a man's life. As the head of the studio, as everyone's come back on mic now, you're allowed yes. back. As the head of the studio, I think the ending should be he gets eaten by a dragon. <laughs> yeah. I'm the head of the studio. What are you on about? Not this studio. This is a meat and cheese. Studio. Oh, the meat and cheese. Studio. The meat and cheese yeah, studio. Here's the studio. He gets eaten by. But can he not teleport away? And that's. Where the, but um, he can't teleport away. But why can't he teleport away? He Set gets, that up in another cause he, film. Because he teleports by accident into the dra- cause into the dragon's stomach. Because <laughs> dragons <laughs> exist in 2003. They do, yeah. So we're still into... He's I lived mean, his that's whole life. history. He's lived his whole life at this point, but we're still in 2003. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, thank you, Tom, for sharing with that. Thank I, you, I, Tom. That's what we love on this show, people sharing people caring <laughs> and we would never silence anyone on this show no never. Ne- i'm not massively for oppression but i am massively <laughs> for um extending the show we're, we're gonna we're gonna we might consider going on for an extra half an hour after nine. Oh, or an hour i'm hungry oh. how do you feel about i'm that, tired <laughs> have yeah. you ever been in a situation where i'm tired nice to meet you you've I'm wanted hungry. to leave the radio station but i'm you just hungry i'm austria <laughs> <laughs> one, one, uh, maybe one time before. No, yeah, one Liz. I don't know. Yesterday, she said, "I'm hungry." I went, "I'm Austria." Should we get together and make the Austro-Hungarian Empire? <laughs> what Liz said that to you? No, I said that to Liz. Oh, you Liz said that. To I Liz. bet you she wanted to slap you. <laughs> I thought it was quite good. And that's the slap of the Black Hand Gang that started the First World War. Exactly. Oh, I do know that part of history. Just not a lot, a lot about. Yeah, you just don't, just don't know about the Victorian you knew about era. The black Hand Gang, but you didn't know about the Victorian era. That and the, and the Elizabethan me. era and Victoria. <laughs> I don't it's know. Completely just. <laughs> we learn new things every day here. Yeah, just like. Oh. Just gonna have some funky beats in the background. This is the sort of stuff you might hear on Tom's Electronics. I imagine it is. Oh, hang on. Let me. Let me. Let me. Have you got separate separate levels for headphones. So Gibbs. No. Hello. <laughs> Please tell me what was going through your mind when you were in the studio after hours. Uh, it wasn't a comfortable experience, I'll be honest with you. You know, I just wanted to... I don't know. When the studio closes, you want to be out by the time the studio's closed. You know, people got to go home and everything like that. But that's a story for another time. Off air, really. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it just... Would you do it again? Well, willingly, no. <laughs> no. 
No. So this was unwillingly. This was a hostage situation. It wasn't I? Wouldn't describe it as a hostage situation. What, were you locked but again, in? I wasn't locked in. As I said, this will be for another time, off air. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking that seriously because he went. He, was, he gave me that weird flared nostril look, and I was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> Offer. <laughs> do I do I flare them willingly? So what would you yeah. guys do mm. if you had a frozen todger? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh. We're having that conversation now. I'd okay. The, I'd use the ability to try and control. I've turns out I've got a superpower of my own to control, Bit which is nostril flare. Nice. I don't, I, I don't know. I have yet to control it. I don't know, but frozen thing. All right. Uh, Rub some bacon stick on it. it. <gasps> oh, that's all there Why is to it. Why would that help? <laughs> What's the lyrics of the song? I know, I know the song. That's a classic. Uh, I would probably put it in the microwave. <laughs> right, considering you're all Elvis Presley fans, sorry for cutting you off, Tom. It's all right. Have you heard the very sad news? Uh, yeah, I have, yes. Opinions. What, what, what do you mean, opinions? <laughs> opinions! <laughs> well, it's sad, isn't That's it? That's sad. It was just, who, who was she, though? She was Elvis's only daughter. And why, how is she... Like why is she? She died. Fa- well, yeah, but why is she? In I love the this. Celebrity Tom Gibbs spotlight? is like, why should because I? Because she was. Care? She was. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much, well, you know. She was at the Golden <laughs> Globes <laughs> less than two days ago. Was it two, two, three days ago? Oh, none. Yeah, it was basically a few days ago, and uh, Golden dude. Globes is still going. Yeah. Hollywood yeah. Foreign Press that they learnt about inclusivity then. No. <laughs> that is a shame. But it's the same with the Baftas. To be fair. It is. So. I feel like you would be great at funerals. <laughs> what? So, as like the priest or something. You'd be there at the front, you'd be like, yeah, she died, but I don't see why any of us should care. Everyone care. dies. It's about celebrating, you know, it's her life that was the important thing, what, right? What did, what did they really do? Not more. Hey, it's her life, you know, everyone had fun during That's her why life. there's not many people here. I mean, she was only around. 54. Damn, that's yeah. young. Yeah. That's younger than both my parents. Yeah. Apparently it was a cardiac arrest, but if you look at the footage... Of, um, There's footage? Someone well, no, no, it? No, no, no. <laughs> if you look at the footage of her walking around at the Golden Globes, you can tell that something's up. She's clinging on to people and mm. she's a bit out of it and not really answering questions and stuff like that. But is why, it, are you suggesting, why, did, why was uh, she at the Golden Globes else? in the first Possibly. place? Possibly. Mm. It's a bit sad, but then again, she is a celebrity and... But why you know. is she? Why is she at the Golden Globes? Like, is she? An her, they, no, well, her, well she her was dad's Elvis. Well, yeah, her dad's oh, Elvis, and? but she also did she have an acting of, and also singing career. She it's was like, also one of the executive producers on the Elvis film. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if she had, if, I was about to, I was wondering where this was actually coming. She was from. also supporting uh, supporting Austin Butler as well. Mm. Yeah. I thought yeah. she was just like. I thought it was just like Will. If 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 one of Will Smith's kids had a kid, for instance, it's like bringing he's got two along. kids and they're both quite famous. Yeah. yeah. One was no, he's, he's got. He's got. Uh, three kids, but the third one no one really knows about. No, fair enough. I, yeah. I, sure, I respect that massively. Yeah. Now, that is a lifestyle it was from his to first, lead. It was from his first girlfriend before Jada. So. Um, would yeah. it, I don't know that panda. Would anyone oh, like oh, to shit. try it, have a guess at this? You on Earth, online, and on campus. I've got a quiz question. This is Demon FM. Welcome to Demon News. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Now I have so a big question. So the news question. is, Maddie, what is the news? I hate you. <laughs> I have the daughter of Elvis Presley has passed away, is what you just told us, yes? Yeah, but you're not put some funky music Tom, behind it. <laughs> Tom Gibbs oh, is yeah. bopping. <laughs> Tom Sorry, Gibbs it doesn't care when anyone dies. Sorry, Miss Presley, but I didn't know who you were until after you'd gone on the and break. And we must answer this question, this big quiz question. This has not been answered. Um, what is similar between 1901, the year, and 1999, the year? They uh, both had your mum. <laughs> no. Uh, one of them had... Well, none of them had Queen Victoria. Yeah. For one. Wow. No, but not the one I'm looking for. They had uh, the year nine, they had 19 in the first bit. <laughs> no, can't. They were both. Right. They're a hundred years different. No, not the, not the similarity I'm looking for. Huh? I'll tell you this. In, one, look- of, in one of them, 9-11. No I don't happened. know. I'm looking for a similarity between the year 1901 and the year 1999. They are both in the 20th century. Yes, that is the answer. They're both in the same century. That was the answer I was looking for. Congratulations. Done. Nathan, do you have a news headline for us on Demon News? I do, yes. Um, <laughs> actually, no, I don't. I'm not going to say that. 
<laughs> I've got a news headline. The Demon FM news jingle is too funky. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, didn't yeah. Andrew Tate get arrested the other day? He did, yeah. He got, um, yeah, he, he got, got, got arrested uh, for human trafficking. Yeah. No, but also, this is the best thing, he got outed and doxxed by Greta Thunberg. <laughs> Yeah, oh, didn't he have some like pizza that was like? Yeah, away so where he was, he was yeah. starting a Twitter fight. I think with it was Greta pizza in Sutton and Ashfield. If I remember correctly, <laughs> pizza kings, pizza yeah. kings, quite very safe. Yeah. But yeah, basically, he's in a fight with Greta Thunberg over Twitter. Then made a video, and then he had pizza in it. And oh, then they found they there. found him by that way. Pizza box had a tracker in apparently, and that was how they'd found. <laughs> and knew that because Andrew Tate lives in Romania or did live in. Did live in. And they yeah. now he's in custody. Yeah. Yeah. Now in America he's in custody. Now. Oh, for real. He's been transported to America. They expedited him. Yeah. Wow. Oh damn. He's like actually going to go to jail. Then. This is yeah. the hottest oh, news damn. here on the meat and cheese. To be fair, it was nuts. Also, Just a little bit. Also on Demon nuts. News, Demon FM was discussed in a parliamentary debate around the importance of local radio where the MP for Watford, one of the founders of Demon FM, mentioned how great Demon FM is. Is that true? Or is that something you've made up? That is true. And that is the news! Uh, The House of Parliament is the oldest like debating chamber chamber maybe currently still existing. Yeah. It's a very good it's a very beautiful building. Um, the Houses of Parliament yeah. it's falling apart people inside. it is falling yeah, apart it's, be- so, it's beautiful it's so beautiful. that was the Demon FM news just saying Guy Fawkes had a good idea <laughs> hey. we also have jingles <laughs> for <laughs> weather <laughs> and <laughs> travel <laughs> so should we hear those as well yeah go for travel this is the travel one so travelling that's a little bit better that's not as like loud it's pretty abrasive still yeah. so what is the best way of transport is it A Taxi. Trains. It's got to be trains. B, trains. It's trains. Or C, horse and carriage. Go. Got, I think it's D, uh, flying a metre above the ground and being stuck <laughs> on the A4. <laughs> that is that is correct. Now, also in travel, Tesla. <laughs> Tesla um, are electric cars. Yeah, Have you heard of them? Yep. Yes. Well, the Tesla CEO uh, uh, earlier this year brought Twitter. Have you heard of that? Elon Musk. Here's something I wanted to discuss. So, um, What is it? I know someone who owns a Tesla. His name's Dylan. Yeah. Dylan. And Dylan got blocked by Elon Musk on Twitter and found that his Tesla suddenly stopped working. And That's who's hilarious. And who's Dylan? I don't know. I made him up. <laughs> remote shot off. Can you Wait, that did you just make that up, Corey? Well, yeah. About half the things Corey says are made oh, up. Do you know what? It's quite hot in here. Let's go to the weather. That was very In the... In the... Uh, in the Alpine region of France, where people go skiing, yeah, it's, it, um, it's not snow. It's not snowed. Yeah, the snow dried up. Yeah, yeah. and my posh friends post about it on their stories. <laughs> There's no snow. On Boston Day, the road is closed. Is that a cowbell? <laughs> yeah. It seems like that's the rain bell. I need more cowbell. I need more cowbell. It is currently raining cowbell in the Demon FM studio. Apparently they're just falling every three <laughs> seconds really or so. Cowbell. One will fall onto my head in about 20 seconds, I guarantee. How was everyone's Christmas? <laughs> McQuiddin? <laughs> how was everyone's Christmas? McQuiddin? <laughs> Tom, sorry, you start. How was your Christmas? My mate had some Christmas. No, sorry. Is that point of story when Corey starts playing sound effects? Yeah. Did you have... It was pretty good. I spent it the way I wanted to, with family getting moderately drunk. Moderately. Okay. Moderately. You've got to keep <laughs> control on these things. And yeah, what was the I weather agree. like? <laughs> the weather was uh, cloudy with a chance of cowbell. How many presents <laughs> nice. did you open? I opened about... I don't, I, don't, I don't like to count. Was there any gifts. presents you didn't like? No, I quite liked all of mine. They were mm. just <laughs> close, close to booze. You know. which, present, which present was your favourite? <laughs> My favourite was probably the big bottle of rum that I got. Oh, that's that good. Was what was nice. your least favourite? That I had and I was sipping don't on it. Don't tell me about my least favourite. Was that, that the, was, was that the, the same one? one? You weren't yeah. sipping on that bottle, were you? I, Maddie, I wasn't oh. sipping on the bottle, I was sipping a shot of it. Maddie, what was your favourite? Because I didn't have it with mixer, so I just was the same drank pure Maddie, what was your least favourite present this year? Um. Uh, I know you've got one. I, I know you've know definitely got one. Yeah, hey, it's it, not it, the present you got. Her. Well, technically, no. It's it, it, technically it's not a Christmas present. It's just after Christmas, like five days after Christmas, I got um. New Year's. Yeah, basically, uh, New Year's present. I got um a Can gift card this? that doesn't really work from oh. my mother. Oh no. Yeah. How much money? Okay. Like, oh, yeah. did. <laughs> And Sherry doesn't, so doesn't work. What was all. your <laughs> least favourite Christmas present? My least favourite Christmas present this year. Um, mm. Joe, I had a pretty good Christmas present this year. Yeah. Uh, I'm nothing to complain about. 
Um, Kickstart your Tuesday nights if you have with to pick, Tom's if, if you have to pick your least favourite present, which one would it be? <laughs> uh, uh, I draw. I don't have one. You don't have one. I don't have one. But I tell you what, I did buy my brother for Christmas. Yeah. Because I spent the entire year winding him up by losing his water bottles and losing his socks. Corey, I will remove you from Zeta. Please stop with the sound effects. Poor Nathan here is trying to tell everybody what he got for Christmas. Demon (laughs) FM. That might be my fault. I may have pointed it towards Tom's Electronics (laughs) hot keyboard. Kickstart your Tuesday nights with Tom's It's not a bad hockey, though. Weekly from 7 p.m. Yeah, this is not a Tom's Electronics. Could we, could we like, re edit it? So, Tom's I'm really sorry to any of our listeners, our chairperson. <laughs> there aren't any listeners. It, it, it's anymore. just taken over. I've scared you all away. But if you are still here for some reason, then hello. So, we're sorry. We feel, so, we feel sorry for you. Water, water bottles. I want to hear this water bottle. I want to hear the water bottle story. <laughs> Um, do you know what? I'm not in the mood to tell that story. It's Corey. <laughs> okay. Um. Game over. What? Is, what is that? <laughs> I've got game over button on my hot keyboard. I, I might not after this. <laughs> right, you've got nine. Nine minutes left of the show. We've got six minutes. Nine minutes. It says nine up there. We are having nine minutes. It says five to nine. We've We've got got five minutes. I there's too many buttons going on and my head's hurt hurting. Have you are you two in a section where you just wind things up? Yeah. (laughs) Do I win a prize now? Do I get to choose some? Unfortunately no. Four. East three. It just watches it's a trap. Tom, I'm really it's in- a trap. I'm really interested. What? Two. How, d- <laughs> how did you um, come up with your uh, electronics? Uh, like, um, what are they called? Twelve. Jingles. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, Corey's playing. How did I come up with my twelve jingles? Yeah. Apparently. Oh well, I've got, I've got a bit less. <laughs> well, my one jingle. There we go. Yeah. It's a bit more accurate. Um, I just made them. two. Well, I just twelve. <laughs> Sorry. With this, I thought, okay, you know, if I'm going to play them throughout the song, 20, throughout the show, even yeah. 19, then they should use 18, 17, go on, 16. I might end up revoicing these depending 15, on. Is he Geordie? Is he Geordie? 14, 13, 13, 13 12, 14, 12, 11, so yeah, 11. Who, who did this 14, one? Then? How did we get this 14? So, this is there's a guy in town 12, that I know called, um, Called Mr. Nine, L, who voice, who does another eight, radio show on another yeah. radio station 18, in town. Yeah, uh, and he's got seven, a fantastic and a really like 12, clear pronounced like, six, voice for voiceover 12, work. I said to him a couple five, years ago, you should start to work 12, in VO. Yeah, um, days put your phone number in. Do voiceover for all of this, so I came up with some scripts for it. There's no zero. Um, yeah. Put it all towards seven. Music, like, <laughs> show. Yeah, and, and voila. And Jingles. did nine. I mean, nine. It, I mean, they really, are, they really sound good. And that's like. the emergency number. <laughs> if anyone needs, um, <laughs> I'm going to do it. How, how often do you use them on your show? Do you use them a lot by yourself? A couple of times. You don't want to use them too often on. because if you spam the same jingle to people, if you spam the same jingle to people every now and then, people might get a bit wound up. So you've got to learn to sort of pace yourself with it. And so each one I use once per show. Once per show. What would you say your? What would you say the limit is per show? On the limit. Well, I have about four of them, I think. So I've got two top ones there and two bottom ones. So Corey. Four Here's the um, phone number for Pizza Queens. <laughs> <laughs> Pizza four, Queens or just Queens? Four. Pizza Queens. That's not a real thing. One. <laughs> one. <laughs> six. Two. Five. Four. Coming on next week, Tom. Three. <laughs> Let's see. Two, if Corey's still here one. with the soundboard, then maybe. And then there's a zero, but we don't have one of those. <laughs> do we not have a zero? No. Do you need no. a do you need someone to voice you a zero jingle? Go on, do it right now. Zero. Zero. That was well, that was awful. No. Zero. 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 I'm trying to 12. do my best Geordie accent, because obviously this guy <laughs> Zero. That was that was awful as well. Say. Two minutes I've, to nine, guys. I've lost my trail of thought now. Yeah, there's I a feel reason. like I've been. I, want, I, want, I, want, I do want to hear at some point this story of yours, Nathan, about the water oh. bottle. Um, one day we'll hear it. One day, offer. 
because uh, oh, it's one of those. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's no, it's those. not. It's not nothing like that. Don't worry. Oh, I see. Um, oh, okay. How many off air stories do we have now? Then two, two, two. Yeah, what yeah I've your, got loads of stories that I can't tell on air. What's your off air story then, Muddy? My life. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Also, anything to do with my mum that doesn't end up with us joking about it. Like the image that you showed me the oh other God. day. Oh, <laughs> God. Don't start. What I happened? No. Uh, off air. It's an off air thing. Off air story. Yeah. But it's bad. Demon off air. I've yeah. off air story. Yeah? Like sh- like <laughs> so why are you bringing it up? <laughs> hey, guys. What's the age of consent in Japan? Age 13. Too young. 13. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know when you like, made these sounds, you know, you produce them, you use it. Did you ever expect them to be used? That was horrible. <laughs> well, I've not produced these sounds that Corey's using. What's the age of consent the in the ones UK, on my Corey? soundboard, no, I did not. I didn't 16. Ex- <laughs> I didn't expect a midway through mead and cheese shout out for Tom's Electronics, but here we go. What's the age of consent in America? Too young. There I have up. no idea. It's 21. It's very state from state. Is it 21? It's 21 in some states, yeah. Goodness me. And also, if you also just... <laughs> If you go to the south, it's quite young. Yeah, it's really bad. It's Twelve. <laughs> I think some might be. Yeah. <laughs> we have sixty seconds left, people. We do. Thank you. If you're still listening, then I don't you. know why. Do you know what it is in mainland China? Don't know. Fourteen. <laughs> wow, that's upsetting. That is. Bad. I thought you were going to say four. Japan's thirteen. I told you it was thirteen. That's so sus. It yeah, is what? a wee bit. It's Japan's because they're desperate for kids. They don't what have a lot do you of kids. Even? No, they've got, they've got a lot they of do, conversations. Yes, they yes. do, yeah. yeah. Goodbye. DNSL. Thank you for listening to Mead and Cheese. So do China, actually. So, yeah, right. the United one States is... 16. Yeah. In some states. 17. In other states. 18. In he is a jolly. other states. And that's that's it. Okay. Okay. Not 12. <laughs> 7. <laughs> And that's me. What, what, about, what about France? What's the age of consent in France? Just for Hugo. Two. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening.